Right. So how many of us have been accused of being anti-Semites at some time or other in recent years? Have you been purged from labour? Oh, you naughty person. Defended Jeremy Corbyn. <gasps> Heaven forbid. Pointed out the difference between anti-Semitism and anti-Zionism. Well, who do you think you are? Criticise the actions of entities such as Labour against anti-Semitism or the campaign against anti-Semitism. What if I told you every last bit of it could now be brought into question? So much of what many of us on the left have been accused of, falsely, as we've been saying over and over again for years, and various actions that have taken place since, of course, stem from the passing of the Equality and Human Rights Commission's report back in October 2020 relating to their investigation into anti-Semitism in the Labour Party. Now, nobody denied it was there. It was a societal ill. Anti-Semitism pervades all manner of public institutions and bodies. But the fixation on the Labour Party only, ignoring the racism of, for example, the Tory party or the Liberal Democrats or any number of governmental departments or structures or quangos or charities, well, smacked of the issue being weaponised, didn't it? Some of us called it out. Labour under Corbyn is the only racism story in town as it was, and anti-Semitism superseded all other forms because the papers weren't interested, unless there was some establishment-friendly political angle to take on it to bash Corbyn. But that didn't necessarily preclude the Labour Party from being investigated to see what the extent of the issue was, and equally it didn't mean their findings had to be taken as read and just accepted, and the fact the report was instigated back in 2018 by the actions of the campaign against anti-Semitism and the Jewish Labour movement, both decidedly anti-Corbyn as they were, he dared to be pro-Palestinian after all, should also ring alarm bells. And it's not just me saying that and pointing to them and saying it's all their fault. It's all on the Labour Party website. Since the CAA masquerade as a charity, whilst effectively being a pro-Zionism lobby group and the JLMR Starmerites themselves having taken over anti-Semitism training in the Labour Party following the EHRC report, we probably shouldn't find that too surprising. But the, the, uh, the, the, the JLM themselves have been panned as being woefully inadequate in the subsequently published Ford report, of course, which Labour are desperate to pretend doesn't exist. Now, Jeremy Corbyn, of course, was entirely within his rights to pass comment on the report's publication. He felt the issue of anti-Semitism was being exaggerated for political ends, and a great many of us agree with that. The HRC report itself said he was within his rights as a politician, as the then leader of the party, to express such views without repercussion. The Labour Party National Executive Committee cleared him as well, saying he was within his rights to say that. It's not an issue. It was Starmer himself personally intervening and abusing his own executive power that saw Corbyn suspended, and that's where he has remained ever since, now also blocked from standing for Labour at the next election. Well, the report itself was not taken as read when it was published, and woefully underreported has been the fact he's been under judicial review, that a judicial review into the report was instigated by former Labour London Mayor Ken Livingstone and a former Labour councillor, Pat Bromley, into that report. Now, a judicial review isn't something that is meant to take a long time. It is what it says on the tin, a legal review before the judiciary, i.e. a judge to review a report in a similar way that, for example, any scientific paper that gets written has to be peer-reviewed before it is considered legitimate. Um, it's an examination of the evidence and a check on the report to see if it passes muster in what it is saying. Instead, it's got dragged out for nigh on three years, well in excess of twice the length of time these things typically take. Now, Livingstone and Bromley had their own reputations at stake in all of this too. The two of them were singled out in the EHRC report itself for having contributed to unlawful harassment related to Jewish race and religion. That was the claim. So clearly, they wanted to clear their own names. By doing it by way of a judicial review, other parts of the report they disagreed with that didn't necessarily relate to them directly, they hoped might well be overturned as well. Things went by and by and large, Livingston and Bromley's favour. In fact, they had a case. A high court judge had decided it would proceed to trial. Well, it won't be now because the EHRC have decided to settle with Livingston and Bromley. And that is massive. That is huge. That is going to have whoa, big and rep uh, repercussions. It is, in effect, a statement that they believe that their own report is flawed this response by the EHRC. Certainly that is the view of Livingston and Bromley and reinforcing that belief it's the circumstances of the settlement because the settlement deal proposed by the EHRC is for both sides to just withdraw from the case and to bear their own costs. In other words, the EHRC are not going to try and recover any of their own legal costs from Livingston and Bromley and their costs 
a run to some £215,000. No effort to try and recover any of that? Well, that doesn't exactly scream honesty and integrity, does it? When it's their report that's ended up under the microscope. In a display of karma, frankly, the CAA have also invested tens of thousands of pounds in this case on legal fees. They're going to have to bear those costs themselves too. Livingston and Bromley have £35,000 in costs themselves to find. That, however, has been covered by former Labour MP Chris Williamson out of costs he was awarded in his own legal fight against the Labour Party. So, again, a bit of karma too. Above all else, though, by choosing to settle, the EHRC have undermined their own report. The veracity of it has been severely damaged, and all those pointing to it as proof of Labour's anti-Semitism under Corbyn well, that's been shaken to its roots. Every part of it has now been cast into doubt because the EHRC didn't want the bits that were definitely flawed getting pointed out, it would appear. And in, in all it does is imply that the EHRC themselves know some or all of it is indeed flawed. Not that they are accepting that, of course. They are claiming that they wanted it all over and done because of the time and resources they've had to spend defending it. Tiny violin time. If that was such a massive issue, why? Still, no attempt to recover any of your costs. Because it all smacks of wanting to run away from something that's getting a bit too uncomfortable for them. And if they won't see through a defence of their own report, why should anyone else defend it? And if they are, why should notice be taken of that going forwards? For anyone saying they didn't lose the case, what's technically true, explain why they didn't see it through then. And that absolutely brings us to the fallout that we ought to see now, because this could be the beginning of the end of the anti-Semitism scam that has been pulled, chiefly against the left, of course, as it has been. You can start with Corbyn's suspension. His entire suspension has no sound basis whatsoever any longer, based on it as it was on claims in this report that he was weak on dealing with anti-Semitism. The NEC had already cleared him of that. Now Starmer must justify his own personal position for him to remain in that position of being suspended and no longer able to stand to defend his seat in North Islington. When this report got released, there was absolute uproar by the BBC and other media outlets. Where are they now in reporting that they were actually wrong about it? That the EHRC of themselves undermined their own report and the settlement with Livingston and Bromley? Tumbleweed stuff again from the establishment press. How about Unite the Union, the union run by Sharon Graham these days, having banned the Jeremy Corbyn film The Big Lie from its buildings, allegedly... That ban is entirely based on the EHRC report findings too. So that's now completely discredited. So in which case, if that is true, can we expect a U-turn on all this decision then, Sharon? Back to Labour, it opens an almighty can of worms because how many people have been expelled from the party based on finding, based on decisions made by the government's and legal unit on findings based found in, found in this report, all on the basis of this report that is now found to be flawed? Do all of them have a case to dispute that now in light of this settlement? Will that likely be tested in court too by someone or an organisation that has been prescribed even? The ramifications will continue to be felt more widely. And actually, it shouldn't be a surprise to too many people that the EHRC did settle to bring this to an end. It had already been found in the Ford report that anti-Semitism was weaponised against the left for factional gain. And now that could result in more litigation aimed at the Starmer regime. Defendants put in a much stronger position, I would think, from this. Leading Jewish KC Jeffrey Bindman has also called the EHRC report highly contentious. And frankly, if you're still sticking to your guns that those accused of anti-Semitism off the basis of this report are part of some kind of a Corbyn cult, you might want to look in the mirror when it comes to calling anybody else in a cult and examining your own life choices if this is the hill you wish your reputation to die on. Every dishonest, disingenuous Labour figure from the Parliamentary Labour Party to local CLPs deserves to be derided in no uncertain terms over their conduct here, especially if they're doubling down on it, either having been taken in by the scam because it benefited their faction or because they were very much part of the problem to begin with. The charitable status of the CAA and others like them seriously needs examining because I can't imagine people donate to them to lose that money in court on an issue they've got no ground to stand on. There should be significant apologies coming from such people in the Starmer regime for how they have conducted themselves, but they won't come. And that should undermine and underscore their real intent and reasoning for their actions. And if they're the sort to weaponize racism and double down on it in light of this court settlement, they remain utterly undeserving of your vote. Why in God's name would you give such people more power? To underscore all of this, the one line that blows it all apart came from the judge involved in the review when they said it is Arguable that the defendant, in this case that means the EHRC, made an error of law in relation to Article 10 of the European Convention of Human Rights. 
Article 10 protects our right to freedom of expression. The EHRC report, therefore, stood accused of hindering that, restricting what can be said by way of, in this case, criticism of anti-Semitism narratives, pro-Israel and anti-Palestinian commentary. So every single action carried out in the name of this report can now stand accused, in theory at least, of violating Article 10 of the Human Rights Act. That would be an interesting one to see testing co tested in court, wouldn't it? I wonder what we'd see happen. What do you think, though? Have you been accused of being something you're not in relation to this? Have you been purged? What do you think should happen in regards to those who have used this as a basis to carry out actions against others? Do let me know your thoughts on this story in the comments below, as always, and be part of the conversation. Thanks for watching. Hope you found the video useful. Please like, share and subscribe if you did. More content out daily. Meanwhile, here's a video recommendation with Jewish author Michael Rosen has come under attack by the same people who like to lay into Jeremy Corbyn and perhaps they'll be swallowing a large slice of humble pie right now or ought to be in light of this legal finding. And I'll hopefully see you on the next vid. Cheers, folks.